Now drives body off. All right, breathe deeply again. Come on, keep working it. Put some water on his body. He keeps throwing his head, he doesn't say anything. Hey, he took a point away. He's tired. Did you notice? He's definitely tired. You have to go through him. Go through the middle. Take your leading hand. And this time, the German trainer's advice may well be on point because Cotto did seem to take a bit of a rest in the seventh round. Urkel by CompuBox numbers landing more power shots in the round, 16 out of 31 to 10 out of 27. Landing more punches and throwing more punches in the round. If you were looking for a round in the fight to give to Urkel, that was it. Harold Letterman did so, but because of the point deduction, it becomes 9-9 on his card. But go ahead. How distracting is it to Cotto to be fighting with the blood coming from the cut above his left eye, Lennox? It is distracting for him because he doesn't want to get cut. Okay, no it just throw, gives no him throw, something throw, else yeah, to worry yeah, about. No and, you know, no fighter likes to get a cut in there because there's always that chance that the referee's going to stop it or the cut could worsen. We're three months away from June 9. Go could ahead. it affect his date in Madison Square Garden with Zab Judah? It may affect his date depending how fast he heals and how bad the cut is. It doesn't look like a, a serious rip around the eye. As you can see, Urko still throwing punches towards that left eye, wanting to open it. But it could get more serious in the next three or four rounds. Exactly. You don't expect that Cotto's thinking about that, incidentally. You don't expect that he's in there thinking, oh no, I'm going to lose my June 9 date with Judah in Madison Square Garden. But you do expect that he could be distracted by the constant butting, the constant head contact, and the trickle of blood. He definitely is distracted from it because, you know, that's what Urko came to do, to make it not an easy day for him. Well, you said in the opening on camera, Urkel needed to find a way no, to no, take no, Cotto no. out of his game. Accidentally, though it happened, it seems okay, for okay, the okay, moment okay. to have happened. Not that it gives Urkel necessarily a big chance to win the fight, just that it means that maybe the fight goes a much greater distance than Cotto might himself okay, have no expected. Way, no, 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 no. He's accustomed to chopping people down around the 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth Ooh. round. Urkel definitely came to fight. He's not one of these guys to lay down. Came in with the strategy. Okay, okay, no money, no money, no money. No. no, no holding. And there's no question Miguel Cotto's punches in the last two rounds have not had the same snap as in the preceding rounds where okay, no money, almost no money, everything was thudding audibly. Seems like he's biding his, his time right now. He's waiting for that right opportunity where it can really explode on Urkel. <coughs> okay, this is the eighth of the schedule, 12 in between rounds. Time. Once again, Michael Buffer will read the official scores. Urkel, hey. Urkel, Urkel, that's going. Referee's going to let, it, let the doctor look at it. Possibility of stopping the fight and going to the scorecards. I mean. Doctor says he can fight. Ten seconds to go in the round. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, then, then. Oh, that was a bad headbutt right at the end of the round by Urkel. Which once again interrupts the flow as we get ready to show you a package of Tape looks at Miguel Cotto's body shots throughout the fight, as I mentioned, regarded by many as the superior body puncher in the sport at this moment. Left hook to the body, right to the body. It's, it's the way he sits down on this Lennox and commits to it that creates the power, right? He, and his accuracy is great. He just knows how to throw that punch right behind the elbow and get through with the punch. He throws it in a good fashion. <laughs> Step back a little bit, huh? so he doesn't put the head in. Nothing. 
Well, I didn't hear the scores. Did you? Now Cotto seems anxious to begin the action again. After round seven and eight seeming to be a little bit less zesty for Cotto, he comes back out with a flurry to begin the ninth. It's interesting what goes on between fighters sometimes. Big uppercut with the left hand by Cotto. And there's that uppercut I was telling you about because Urkel ducks his head right into that uppercut. Anytime he's protecting his body, he tucks down right down into that uppercut. Okay, here are the scores. Cotto leading 77, 74, 78, 73, and 80, 71. Harold, how do you have it? Jim, I've got it 79, oh, no, no, 72. No, no, no. Okay, Seven on. rounds for Cotto, one round even. The one oh, round right, even right. being right. the round that uh, referee Louis Pabon took a point away from Octay Urkel, which made it an even round. I mean, Miguel Cotto just hammering away at the body, round after round after round. The only round he lost was like Lennox called it. Okay, when no, no, Urkel no, no, took no, him out no, of his no, game no. with a headbutt. But other than that, it's all Miguel Cotto, 79, 72. I have it pointed too closer. Um, Cotto doesn't appear to be in any danger um, except to his reputation. Well, what about his reputation, Larry? I mean, could his reputation be damaged if he has to go to the distance against Oktay Okal in a fight of this nature with an accidental cut over his left eye? No, I think you give him credit. He won the fight. He fought a tough guy. He couldn't get if that's the way it turns out. But, um, you know, he's been dominant in this fight as he won against Malinaji. Malinaji fought okay, him nobody, nobody, hard. Nobody, nobody. Uh, so, you know, but we want to see what he does against somebody who can really crack. Because he's been cracked okay, a few nobody, times nobody, nobody. by Urkel nobody, nobody. to no effect. Lennox, do you think Zab Judah can really crack? Zab Judah can definitely crack. Whether, whether he can uh, do it against Koto is the question. Lloyd Mayweather would say maybe Zab can crack for the first few rounds, but not after that. Mayweather called Judah a front runner who's capable of fighting for three or four rounds, but not beyond that point. Koto may be tired because he's fighting an unusual round here, backing up to the ropes. I think he's just trying another strategy. He wants Yurkow to come at him and see if he can commit himself and make any mistakes so he can take advantage of that. Sunday, April 15, tune into the premiere of our special four episode series, Dale Oya Mayweather 24 7. We'll go inside the lives of both fighters through exclusive interviews and full behind the scenes access to their training camps as they prepare for what projects as the biggest fight since Lennox Lewis fought Mike Tyson in Memphis June 8, 2002. In other words, the biggest fight in four years and 11 months in our sport, De La Hoya versus Mayweather. And here we're going to see Koto take advantage of that uppercut and the fact that Urkel is sticking that head down. Great uppercut. And Urkel's either saying that was a good shot or is that all you have? Or both. <laughs> but hey, remember, Urkel went the distance with Costa Zou, who was regarded as a monster puncher at 140 pounds at that time. Urkel went to the 12th round, uh, actually fought the distance with Vivian Harris one time through, and then was TKO'd in the 11th. In both fights, he fought with a broken nose, and Harris was regarded as a pretty big puncher at 140 pounds, pretty sharp puncher at least. So it's no shame, it would appear, on record if Cotto has to go the distance to beat Otai Urkal. Urkal's the kind of fighter who's done this against good fighters before. Still in all, he's 36. Cotto's 26 in his prime, stronger man. 
this time I get to correct you. He's 37. <laughs> We're even. Koto's doing the right thing, starting off everything with a jab. Very important when, when all the action becomes a bit lax, that jab really starts everything off again. And Erico's not an easy target. He's moving around the ring. He's and doing what he does naturally, and that's movement. He's right, a great right. mover. And incidentally, he's been pretty active with his own hands. In fact, as of moments ago, Tyre Kyle has now landed more power punches against Miguel Cotto than anyone else in the 18 Cotto fights that CompuBox has tracked. Now, part of that is the result of the fact that they fought into the 10th round, and a lot of Cotto fights have been shorter than that. I mean, Kelson Pinto was landing power shots, and Ricardo Torres was landing power shots, but those fights ended in six or seven rounds. A couple of years ago in Dortmund, Germany, when Vladimir Klitschko was fighting there, I ran into uh, Urkal in the fitness room. He wasn't even fighting at the time. He was working out. And you can see how fit this 37-year-old man is. And Miguel Cotto is totally frustrated with Otai Urkal because of the number of times that their heads have come together. And Cotto just expressed it by lifting Urkal up in what almost became a WWF move. All right, right there. Come on, watch out for the Z-Bots, man. Don't move your head, don't move your head. Don't do that same thing again. Come on, man, don't do that again. You have to be careful with your defense. Keep it closed. Dangerous if you open up. It can get you if you open it up. And, and here's that little thing at the end. You know, let me tell you, for Kodo to do this shows great strength. It's not easy, easy to do a thing like this, to lift your opponent up. Does it show a lack of composure, though? Not really. You know, the guy's leaning on top of him. He's just standing straight up and picking him up with him. I don't know, it doesn't look like any great act of strength to me. Well, Larry, you were a football player at the <laughs> University of Oklahoma. I mean, you've probably done that to 230-pound fullbacks yeah, back ahead. in your day, right? Okay, nobody's on, nobody's on, nobody's on, sure. okay? Crowd wants Cotto to get his knockout. So they roar with approval every time he lands something. And he fires that left hook to the body to punish Urkow with it one more time, but Urkow just isn't going to go from the body punches tonight. One point. Head. Another headbutt penalty against Urkow. I don't know about that one. They're throwing the towel in from the corner. They want Urkow's the corner is going to throw in the towel. The trainer says enough. And Cotto gets his knockout. Why? I don't. I don't. Yeah, get it. I didn't understand that one bit. He wasn't losing the fight. He was doing well. I. I that I, was weird. I'm I think the trainer is saying that the referee is being unfair in constantly penalizing Urkal, and they don't want to be a part of it anymore. Well, that. And they also knew the scores because of the open scoring, which eliminated any suspense about whether Urkal I, had know, a chance I, to win the fight. And, and